one world, not a one world, one nation, one people on earth living in peace. He circumstances around the mysterious death of the self-proclaimed goddess Isis, who reigned from 51 to 30 BC, continue to baffle people today. The shocking loss of this renowned, influential female leader at a prime age remains a captivating tale from ancient Egypt. Cleopatra, the last queen of Egypt, met an exceptionally brutal and strange death. People are still asking, what exactly happened at the mausoleum? Join us in this video as we explore the brutal execution of Cleopatra and delve into the secrets of ancient Egyptian royalty. Ancient Egyptian history wouldn't be complete without the famous historical event that claimed the life of one of the politically strong women in ancient history politics. Cleopatra VII, Thea Philopator, renowned as the Queen of Kings of Egypt, was born in 69 BCE. She was the seventh daughter in the Ptolemy dynasty to bear the name Cleopatra, which means glory of the father. What adds an air of intrigue to her story is that Cleopatra was not of Egyptian descent despite her fame and reign over Egypt. Hailing from the Ptolemaic dynasty, which originated from Greece, Cleopatra and her family had a predominantly Macedonian Greek lineage with a possible hint of Iranian heritage. According to the classical author Plutarch, Cleopatra enigmatically immersed herself in learning the Egyptian language for political reasons during her early years. This was a deliberate effort on her part to integrate herself into Egyptian politics and society. Her privileged upbringing in the royal palace of Alexandria provided her with these opportunities, and she received education in various subjects such as mathematics, astronomy, medicine, and music. Cleopatra held the titles of Queen of Egypt, Cyrene, and Cyprus. She was renowned for her passionate nature, beauty, intellect, and determination to advance the interests of the Ptolemaic legacy. Cleopatra's coin portraits depict an alive rather than beautiful countenance, with a sensitive mouth, firm chin, liquid eyes, broad forehead, and prominent nose. This queen had an incredibly fascinating branding for her time. Cleopatra styled herself as the new Isis, a title that distinguished her from the earlier Ptolemaic Queen Cleopatra III, who had also claimed to be the living embodiment of the goddess Isis. With great political intelligence, Cleopatra formed powerful alliances. She gained the support of many nations and their people, including the people of Egypt. She was a talented and resourceful individual with great charm, but was ruthless when she felt it was necessary. Cleopatra established herself as one of the prominent leaders in ancient Egypt. Let's discuss Cleopatra's journey to becoming the queen of Egypt. During the first century, three formidable generals, Julius Caesar, Gnaeus Pompeius Magnus, and Marcus Licinius, asserted their dominance as superpowers, expanding their control worldwide. This expansion threatened Egypt, as Rome's immense wealth and influence made it an appealing and necessary source of financial support. What is Egypt's part in all of this? The answer lies in the actions of Cleopatra's father, Ptolemy the Wealthen, who actively facilitated interactions with the Romans. In 80 BC, following the assassination of Ptolemy the Lephan, his only male heirs, Ptolemy the Wealth and his younger brother, both born out of wedlock to Ptolemy IX, emerged. Ptolemy the Wealth assumed the throne in 76 BC, but doubts about his legitimacy were raised in Rome. Anti-Senate politicians claimed to possess a will allegedly written by Ptolemy the Lephan which purportedly bequeathed Egypt to the Romans. Fearing the loss of his throne and the end of his dynasty, Ptolemy the Wellen took a significant risk and forged an agreement with Rome. The search for the next pharaoh commenced after Ptolemy the Wealth died in 51 BC. The throne passed to his young son, Ptolemy Thortid, and his daughter, Cleopatra VII. It is believed, although not definitively proven, that the two siblings married shortly after their father's death. At 18, Cleopatra, eight years older than her brother, assumed a dominant role in ruling Egypt. Evidence suggests that in October of 50 BCE, Cleopatra emerged as co-regent of Egypt alongside her younger brother and husband, 10-year-old Ptolemy XIII, following the traditions of Egyptian royalty. Like her father before her, Cleopatra wanted absolute power in Egypt. She began actively removing her brother's name from official documents. However, Faced with economic failures, famine, and crippling debt, Cleopatra recognized the need for assistance from mighty Rome to restore peace and prosperity to Egypt. 
but this time, she did it on her terms. Cleopatra was not the only one harboring ambitions of sole control over Egypt. With advice from his advisors, Ptolemy XIII sent Cleopatra away from Alexandria in 48 BC and said he was the only ruler. The stage was set for a conflict between the sibling spouses. Left alone and powerless, Cleopatra devised a plan to capture the attention of Caesar, who was celebrating his victory over Pompeii at the Battle of Pharsalus. Let's discuss the significance of Cleopatra's relationship with Anthony and Julius Caesar in attaining the throne. The relationships between Cleopatra VII, Julius Caesar, and Mark Antony were love affairs and power struggles that changed the course of Egyptian and Roman history forever. Here's how she pulled that off. Soon after Cleopatra was forced to flee Egypt for Syria, where she raised an army, she returned to face her brother at Pelusium in 48 BC on Egypt's eastern border. The murder of the Roman general Pompey, who had sought refuge from Ptolemy XIII at Pelusium, and the arrival of Julius Caesar brought temporary peace. Cleopatra realized that she needed Roman support, or more specifically, Caesar's support to regain her throne. Each was determined to use the other as Caesar also needed money to repay the debts Cleopatra's father, Aulet, incurred as he struggled to retain his throne. Cleopatra was determined to keep her throne and if possible restore the glories of the first Ptolemies and recover as much as possible of their dominions, including southern Syria and Palestine. Fully prepared to seduce Caesar to enlist his help, Cleopatra planned to smuggle herself into Alexandria and inside the royal palace, where Caesar stayed as her brother's honored guest. More than a century later, Greek historian Plutarch described the incident as revealing Cleopatra's seduction skills, which she was also known for in ancient Rome and Egypt. Caesar, 30 years Cleopatra's senior, seemed instantly captivated by the Egyptian queen after succumbing to the charm of further intercourse with her. He reconciled her to her brother based on his joint share in the royal power. Cleopatra finally had the military support she needed to rule Egypt until her brother husband found out. Her brother husband was livid. On finding his banished sister and Caesar together at the palace, having spent the night together, he reputedly flung his diadem to the ground. He stormed out of the room, declaring his sister a traitor to Egypt. This brought chaos as Ptolemy besieged the palace where Caesar was staying, and Cleopatra's younger sister, Arsinoe, also joined in the fight. She declared herself the true queen of Egypt and led rebel forces against her siblings. All hope seemed lost for Cleopatra and her Roman lover during this fight. But with the arrival of Caesar's troops from Syria, the tide turned once more. Ptolemy and Arsinoe were defeated, and it was reported that Ptolemy XIII fled and drowned in the Nile. Cleopatra's seat as Egyptian ruler now seemed secure. She was pregnant with Caesar's child. But instead of declaring Cleopatra the sole ruler of Egypt, the Roman general made her co-ruler with her remaining brother and soon-to-be husband, 12-year-old Ptolemy XIII. In June 47 BCE, she gave birth to Ptolemy Caesar, known to the people of Alexandria as Caesarian, or Little Caesar. Whether Caesar was the father of Caesarian, as his name implies, remains a mystery. Although the child was never formally acknowledged by his father, the pair followed Caesar to Rome, where they were officially welcomed as friends and allies of the Roman people. Beneath the veneer of its friendly exterior, Rome was furious. Caesar had no sons from his Roman wife Calpurnia and none from his previous wives. The idea of Caesarian, the son of a foreigner from a land despised as a pleasure-loving and decadent society growing up to claim rule over civilized Rome as Caesar's heir, was intolerable to them. That situation, however, never came to pass as Caesar named his grandnephew Octavian as his heir. Caesar's life came to a sudden and mysterious end in 44 BC through an act of assassination. Cleopatra, a much-disliked figure in Rome whose gold-covered statue stood in the city's temple of Venus Genetrix, fled with her son. Just months later, the Egyptian queen's second brother husband was also dead, likely on her orders. Cleopatra could rule with her three-year-old son and plan the infant's succession as emperor of Rome. Here's where Mark Antony comes in. Cleopatra befriended Mark Antony during her time in Rome and supported him militarily during the Civil War. She agreed to meet him in Tarsus, modern-day Turkey, to discuss the prospect of Egyptian support in a war against the Parthians. 
Cleopatra set out for Tarsus to charm and seduce her unsuspecting old friend in an echo of plans made seven years earlier with her former lover. This time, however, her entrance was somewhat grand. In Plutarch's words, Cleopatra came sailing up the river Cydnus in a barge with gilded stern and outspread sails of purple, while oars of silver beat time to the music of flutes and fifes and harps. She herself lay all along, under a canopy of cloth of gold, dressed as Venus in a picture, and beautiful young boys like painted cupids stood on each side to fan her. During her reign, Cleopatra made steady alliances with Rome and other countries that helped Egypt to expand and strengthen its empire. She set up trade with other eastern nations. She boosted the Egyptian economy to that of a superpower of the time. Before the war between Egypt and Rome, Cleopatra ruled Egypt peacefully and successfully for almost ten years. During this time, she became renowned worldwide for her strength and intelligence. Let's discuss the mystery behind Cleopatra's death. What do we know about the death of Cleopatra? After Roman forces crushed the Egyptian army in the Battle of Actium, Antony and Cleopatra retreated to Alexandria, where they watched as their former allies and supporters defected to Octavian's side. By the end of July in 30 BC, the Octavian's forces reached Alexandria, and Cleopatra retreated to her mausoleum. It was then Mark Anthony was sent a report that Cleopatra had died, and in response, Antony stabbed himself with his sword. His men carried him to Cleopatra, and he died in her arms. According to Plutarch, an Octavian staff member secretly warned Cleopatra on August 9th that the general was planning to leave for Rome in a few days, taking Cleopatra and her children with him. Cleopatra secluded herself in the mausoleum the following day with two maidservants, Iris and Charmian. She sent a note to Octavian, who resided in Alexandria, possibly in the Queen's palace. Upon receiving Cleopatra's note, Octavian honored her request to be buried next to Antony. He promptly dispatched his men to investigate the situation. When they forcibly entered the mausoleum, they discovered Cleopatra reclining lifeless on a luxurious couch, with her two servants lying dead or dying nearby. Cleopatra was 39 years old at the time of her death and had ruled over Egypt for over 20 years. Was Cleopatra's death suicide? One popular theory about Cleopatra's death suggests that she died from a snake bite, possibly from an asp or a cobra. This theory is based on the symbolism of these snakes in Egyptian culture. However, modern Egyptologists have pointed out some problems with this theory. As the story goes, cobras are large snakes, making it unlikely that one could be concealed in a basket of figs. Also, snake bites usually take hours to cause death and are very painful which contradicts the idea of a quick and peaceful death for Cleopatra and her maids. Another possibility is that Cleopatra poisoned herself. Some historians suggest she may have taken a lethal herbal mixture or applied a toxic ointment. These methods would have been faster and more effective than a snake bite. In 2010, a German historian named Christoph Schaefer proposed that Cleopatra might have ingested a deadly combination of hemlock, Wolfsbane and opium, based on his research and consultation with a toxicologist. There is also a theory that Cleopatra was murdered, possibly by Octavian, due to the political tensions at the time. In 31 BCE, Octavian declared war against Cleopatra and her lover Antony, claiming to be the rightful successor to Caesar's empire. The Battle of Actium occurred, resulting in a devastating loss for Antony and Cleopatra. They fled to Egypt, where they both committed suicide. Antony received false information that Cleopatra had already died, so he stabbed himself. He was then taken to Cleopatra's monument, where he died. In the face of capture by Octavian and the imminent end of her rule in Egypt, Cleopatra chose to take her own life upon hearing about the death of Mark Antony. There have been theories suggesting that Octavian, who later became Emperor Augustus, had a motive to eliminate Cleopatra, as a charismatic queen, Cleopatra represented a potential threat to Octavian's dominance in Egypt as long as she remained alive. The circumstances surrounding Cleopatra's death are still debated. It is unclear whether Octavian directly ordered the murder of Cleopatra and her maidservants, or if he simply allowed her the opportunity to end her own life. However, it is known that Octavian commanded his guards to pursue and kill Caesarion. Cleopatra's teenage son with Julius Caesar, ensuring that there would be no question of his succession to the throne 
following his mother's demise. Octavian swiftly transformed Egypt into a Roman province, assuming the role of emperor and adopting the name Augustus. In his subsequent memoirs, Octavian ensured the perpetuation of his version of Cleopatra's story, including her alleged suicide by snakebite, which would endure for centuries to come. This raised suspicions among some, as the circumstances seemed questionable. The exact nature of Cleopatra's demise has been the subject of extensive speculation, with various accounts proposing suicide by venomous snakebite or even murder. Nevertheless, the truth remains elusive. Since there are no known eyewitnesses and only primary written records of Cleopatra's death, much of our knowledge stems from Octavian, who himself has been considered a possible suspect. As for the events that transpired within the mausoleum, Plutarch perhaps expressed it most accurately when he stated, the truth of the matter no one knows. Researchers have taken it upon themselves to conduct an ongoing investigation into this enigma as they strive to locate Cleopatra and Antony's resting place. As we await the revelation of the mystery behind Cleopatra's death, our curious mind would have to wonder what exactly happened at the mausoleum. We've come to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more content.